Okay, that's in not in a nutshell. So, um, what to record? Well, you can record through many um, media. We have utilized questionnaires, you know, documenting um, the abuses against LGBTI. We've also been keeping a close watch on the media. One of the first things I do in the morning as I stumble out of bed is I do a media scan in Jamaica. What's been said about LGBT? We also have a telephone helpline. We also have a Facebook page where people record and document their abuses. Um, and we do interviews. We've developed a very robust questionnaire. Now, why did we choose to go this route of documenting LGBT human rights abuses in Jamaica? The fact is, we realize that in Jamaica, specifically in relation to HIV, because I work with AIDS World, the prevalence among MSM in Jamaica is 32.9% as against 1.6% in the general population. And we realize that this is being driven by homophobia, which contributes to stigma, which prevents people from accessing treatment, which has led to you know some of the, uh, so the, the statistics we see. So we said, let's identify what, the, 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 what was causing this, um, this high level of intolerance towards homosexuals. Um, and this has been very influential and important information because we've been able to rebut some of the government's positions. For example, one um, our former minister, deputy minister of foreign affairs went to the UPR system in, in Switzerland and said there are no credible instances of attacks against gays in Jamaica. Therefore, they didn't need to do anything. Right? But we were able quite quickly to say, no, nope, you're wrong. We have instances, we have, you know, dates, times, places, etc., etc., to rebut this, this fallacy. And it's because in her context, she probably doesn't know of any gays being attacked, but she's not. She's a sample size of one. And so we were able to provide robust data, okay? And that is how we were able to do it. I, I'll show you one instance of one of the media watch that we have engaged in. Um, on June 21st, a television station in Jamaica, CDM showed, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Again, as, as, as Javier said, you're asking me to do two days of training in six minutes. <laughs> right. Uh, a, a mob attack on homes of LGBT. Right? So these images tell a very powerful story. All right. Um, how do you conduct an interview? You must be objective. You know, it's good to maintain that level of objectivity. You must be personally in, involved or associated with the person. There must be confidentiality. There must be trust, respect the interviewee, don't re-traumatize them through your interview, give them time to recover and to you know, decompress, pay attention to their interview, their um, reactions, if they're weeping, etc. Give them time. They can't give you eye contact, then there are questions about the credibility of the information. And you must have a follow-up. Sometimes what people need are um, medical assistance, psychological assistance, not just to, you know, offload.